Welcome to Grace Bible. We have a, a great treat this morning. How many of you have enjoyed fasting and praying? How many of you have been fasting and praying? Yeah. yeah. I t- last week I, I said, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't like fasting and praying. I, or what did I say? I forgot. I, oh, yeah, I said, I don't, I don't like to fast. I, I like fast food or something stupid like that. Okay. Um, this morning we, we have a special guest with us, uh, Pastor Camille and Pastor Kalai. They came from uh, Pearlside, Oahu. And uh, it was one of the, the, the uh, churches that I had the pleasure to serve in when I was in college. And Pastor Camille, uh, during that time, there was a, a person who passed away in the hospital, and she works at the hospital. And she prayed this person, prayed for this person after the person was flatlined. For how long was the person? Fl- hour and 10 minutes. Uh, this person was dead, uh, declared dead, and she would not relent. And she prayed for this person, and this person came back to life. It became uh, statewide statewide news. It was uh, on the KITV4 News. They interviewed both uh, the person that was prayed for and what they saw, and it it was a a huge miracle. And even though it was a miracle of the past, we're believing that God, we serve a big God, amen? And the same God that did that yesterday, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever— and I love what Pastor Camille said uh, in the first service that we're believing for more in 2024. Can you say that? More in 2024. That God wants to do more. And he's, he's going to do more as we surrender to him with all of our lives. And uh, Kalai, we go back a, a, a while. Um, when I was doing youth ministry, we took a group of high schoolers to Philippines, and he was on that team. And I remember him inputting and, and depositing into the life of our kids. And uh, I, I remember specifically there was a, a watch that he had that was a really nice watch. And he gave that watch to one of our kids, Aaron. And Aaron came, and he, he was wearing, you know, it's kind of a bigger watch for him because he's a small little kid. And he was like, Kalai gave this watch to me. And uh, we're, everybody was like, wow, that's, that's uh, so generous. But Kalai grew from that uh, time. He was a youth, you were a youth pastor a youth worker, just, just on the team. And from that time, now he's one of the main pastors on the uh, central campus at, on Oahu. So we're very privileged to have them here. They are, um, uh, Camille heads up the intercessory ministry there with over 70 prayer clusters uh, at Pearlside. They have been faithfully praying for our church and for Lahaina. And we're believing God for an impartation from both of them this morning. It was a powerful first service. So would you please uh, welcome Pastor Kalai as he opens us up this morning. Good morning. Good to be with you folks. If you have your Bibles, Mark chapter 10 is where we're going to be in today. I think the funny thing, Pastor Jonathan is talking about fasting. And the irony about fasting is this. Fasting is not fast. Fasting is slow. How many of us would recognize that fasting seems like time's just moving very, very slow, and you're just looking at the clock, and it's not even moving fast at all, and that's the irony in fasting. But uh, God does a a huge work in our heart when we set a time, uh, a season, and a time for us to put aside food to feed on God's word and to allow his spirit to strengthen in us. You know, that reminds me of what uh, the... Uh, John said, you know, that if we want God to increase, we got to decrease in our lives. And so if we want more of God in our lives in this 2024, how many of us know that would require us surrendering more of ourselves to him? And so I want more of God, but I don't always want to give God more of myself. And we, if we want more of God, we're going to have to surrender more in our lives. And so Mark chapter 10 we're going to talk about prayer today, and this is going to be the, the context for really how we're going to pull some principles from God's Word to encourage us about prayer. And I know what you're thinking already when we're talking about prayer. How many of us would say, I pray a lot? The irony in prayer is this. Everyone knows that we could always pray more, right? We could always spend more time with God, and there's always some mental hurdles that we need to break past in order for us to really seek God more. The only person who I know prays a lot is Pastor Camille, and so you're going to get an impartation from her today, because how many of us know, in order for you to raise someone back to life, you got to have a huge prayer burst in your life, and so she's going to impart some faith to us today, and we're going to really believe God to impact us in this idea of prayer. So Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52 is the 
passage of scripture that will frame our message today. And it says this, then they reach Jericho, meaning Jesus and the disciples. And as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48, this is where you have the naysayers in your life saying this. Be quiet. Many of the people yelled at him. Shh, you're making a scene. Stop bringing attention to yourself was what he was hearing. But instead of discouraging him, here's how he responded. He only shouted louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up. In an instance, how, you know, just like people who were once booing you can be chi hooing you in the next moment. Cheer up, they said. Tell him, come, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith. Say your faith. Your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. I want to use this passage of scripture to encourage us around this idea today. Praying big prayers. We want to look at how we can pray some big prayers. If you're ready for the word, say yeah. If you want God to speak to your heart, say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you what you started in the first service and what you're going to continue in our hearts in this service. God, we thank you that you're constantly speaking. You're constantly wanting to draw near to us. But we want to hear from you, not from a preacher, not from a person. We want to hear from your spirit. So speak to us. We position ourselves to hear from you. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart that is soft open and receptive for everything that you want to deposit into us today. We thank you for your love. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen and amen. I have uh, fond memories of my grandpa, and one of the things that I used to enjoy doing uh, every week because he lived nearby me is I would go visit him once a week just to connect with my grandpa. And uh, he and I used to golf back in the day, and then the older he got, uh, the less he was able to golf. And so I'd just go and spend time. And one of the things that I was constantly reminded of every time I pulled up to the driveway is as soon as I got out of my car, I could hear the TV because it was so loud. How many of us know the older you get, the louder the TV gets? And so as soon as I got out of the car, I could hear Korean dramas on the TV because for some reason, my grandpa loved watching K-dramas. Any K-drama fans in the house today? We got some K-drama fans, and my grandpa loved watching K-dramas. That was part of his daily routine. He would always be watching that. And so on this one particular day, I get a phone call from my grandpa, and he was calling me frantic. He's like, boy, I don't know what happened, but the TV broke in. The TV is broke. You got to go buy me a new one. I said, hold up, grandpa. Let's not buy something new. I'm going to Drop by after work today and see what we can do. So I get over to the house, and he is sitting on his couch with the TV on, but nothing on the screen, just a blank screen. TV on, blank screen, remote in his hands, just looking lost because he doesn't know what to do because his whole life was just watching Korean dramas in this season of his life. So I do some investigation, and I come to find out that nothing was wrong with the TV. The only thing that was wrong is that he accidentally hit the wrong button which changed the input, so instead of being connected to the cable box, my grandpa was connected to the DVD player. How many of us remember DVDs back in the days? How many of us remember cassette tapes back in the days? How many of us remember having had to go to the store to buy an album for one song? Back in the day, good days. This generation has no idea what we had to go through back in the day. Come on, somebody. <clears throat> So all I did was just press one button to change the input from the DVD player back to the cable box, and boom, the TV starts to work. And my grandpa, 
who thought I was a genius was like, oh boy, you so smart, bah. you so smart, made me feel like a million bucks. Well, all I did was just press one button. He thought he needed to buy a brand new TV. All it was just a smi minor tweak because it wasn't a power problem, it was a connection problem. When it comes to our prayer life with God, how many of us know we serve an all-powerful God? How many of us believe that God can do anything and everything we could ever ask, think, or imagine? That's the God that we serve. So when it comes to prayer, it's not a problem with power. It's a problem with our connection. Sometimes you and I aren't connected to the right source. That's why we're not experiencing the right power in our lives. And so I want to encourage us from this passage that we just read so that we can reconnect our hearts and our spirits back to the right power source, which is God himself. And I'm going to give you the whole takeaway from today's message up front so you don't have to worry about it. And it's this. We pray big prayers because we serve a big God. That's the whole takeaway today. That our prayers and the size of our prayers is influenced by the shape and the size of the God that we serve. So if our God is really big, how many of us know that that should impact the way that we pray? It should impact how we position ourselves to believe God for his best in our lives. We pray big because our God is big. First point in your notes is this. We need to call out boldly to Jesus. Bartimaeus was a blind beggar, and he made his living begging. Basically, his sustenance came on the generosity of other people. So the more he begged, the more he would receive income because he was dependent on other people. Because of his disability, he wasn't able to really be a contributor, a contributor to society. He needed to receive input and livelihood from other people. So he spent majority of his days just begging. But when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to shout. Boldly, he shouted, Jesus. And for us, we need to understand that in order for us to really have a relationship with God, we need to come to God boldly. My son, who is about two years old, he's almost two, and I'm not one of those dads who keeps uh, communicating his age in months. How many of us know people that say, how old is your kid? Oh, 36 months. No, your son is three years old. Okay, get out of the months. Let's move into years. But my son is not yet two. So I've been using, he's almost two, and his name is Judah, and he's cute just like his mom. I married well, guys. I married well. <laughs> and so one of the ways in which uh, he gets my attention is he uses three different words to get my attention. It would be dad, dada, or my favorite, daddy. <laughs> and when my son says daddy, that means I need to give him my attention. And as a dad, anytime I hear my son I will give him my undivided attention because the more that he cries out to me, the more I give him my attention. That's the same thing that goes with God. How many of us know that the more that we cry out to God, the more God will give us the attention that, he, that we desire in our lives? And so here's the thing with God. Because he wants to be in relationship with us, because the whole part of this relationship with God is based on connection, God would often cause situations in our lives to happen in order for us to cry out to him. You ever been in a situation that was beyond you, that you did everything that you could to fix the situation and your last resort was, I got to call out to God? You ever been there before? How many of us know that we sometimes treat God as a last resort instead of a first response? And God wants to be a first response in our lives, but too often we try to fix things on our own. Sometimes God will allow situations to be beyond you, to get you to think beyond you, and to recognize his sovereignty in your life. Some of us, the reason why you're sitting in the seat you're in today is because you faced a situation that was beyond you. You went through a trial and a circumstance that was too much for you to bear, and you had to come to a point in your life to recognize that I need God who's bigger than me in this situation. God will often, because he loves us so much, allow things to happen so that we will cry out to him. That's why we go through what we go through. But God allows certain things so that we can cry out to him. And the more we understand how much God loves us, the more we can approach him boldly in our lives. 
Second point in our notes is this. We need to ignore opposing voices. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at him. But he only shouted even louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. And when Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. The longer I've walked in faith, the more I realize is this, that any time you step out in faith to do something for God, you will have a thousand people telling you that what you're doing is the wrong thing. You're always going to experience opposing voices. You're always going to hear opposing voices from other people because any time you move in faith, there always is going to be opposition. Faith always invites opposition into our lives. And too often we get surprised at the opposition, not realizing that the opposition is a sign from God that you're heading in the right direction. If you're experiencing no opposition in your life, that might be a sign that you are not heading in the right direction. Because opposition is a sign from God that you're moving in the right direction. And sometimes that opposition can be voices, outside voices, people discouraging you. But sometimes it can be inner voices. How many of us know nobody talks to you more than you? Isn't that true? That the dominant voice inside many of our heads is our own voice. And sometimes our own thought process can get so negative that we allow our inner voice to become our inner critic. And we start to discourage ourselves from doing the things that God has placed into our hearts. And so what we do with what we hear will determine whether we're going to grow in faith or whether we're going to shrink back in faith. I remember in that mission trip that Pastor Jonathan just talked about, that was an amazing trip. That was the first time I went abroad. And when I asked my mom and told my mom that I was going to go on a mission trip, she didn't like the idea of me going to a third world country, especially because I'm team light-skinned. I'm a light-skinned Hawaiian, so she was thinking, oh, they're just going to, you know, what we hear in the news about third world countries, oh, you're not going to... It's going to be bad for you, but it was really a life-changing experience. Every day for about two weeks, we were going on the campus, and something in my heart was starting to stir. And at the ending of that trip, I really felt from God that what God was calling me to do in the next season of my life was to give a season of my life to full-time vocational ministry. It was pretty clear. Like, I just felt it. But when I came back, I needed to make some decisions because at that time, I was pursuing a career to become a sports broadcaster. I was... uh, already an intern at KITV, and I was telling everybody what I was going to do, but when God changes your plans, how many of us know that it's his way that needs to matter? I heard it said this way, you got to write your plans in pencil because God should have the final say. And so I wrote my plan, oh, this is what I wanted to do, and everything changed in a moment. And so I really was pursuing full-time vocational ministry. And the more I got serious about that, the more I needed to start to change my life. And so I remember having conversations with my parents. And my dad had a plan for my life. How many of us know parents have that? They have their plans for your life, and you all have to determine if that's your plan for your life. And so my dad had a plan for me and my brother to take over the construction business. I ruined that because I just felt God had something different for me. So I told him what I wanted to do. What do you want to do? I want to be a pastor one day. And immediately a dad who built up a company so that we can have a, the life that we had, was thinking, how are you going to make a living as a pastor? Pastors are poor. How many of us know, you don't know too many rich pastors, right? So how are you going to make a living? And I just told my dad this, oh, it's got to trust God. And every father and mother in the house knows that trust God is not the answer you want to hear, right? You want some, you're going to make this amount of money, you're going to do this, this, and this. And so logic went out the window. And that's when I know sometimes if it makes sense, It's not faith, it's logic. But God doesn't want us to move by logic. He wants us to move by faith. And so sometimes we have to listen to that still small voice of what God is speaking to us. And you know why God needs to whisper to us? He's whispering to us because a whisper means he's near. You don't yell at someone who's sitting right beside you unless you have hard of hearing And you know when you got to yell, it's because you haven't been listening to the whisper. But God doesn't yell. He whispers. Too often our lives are so busy that the noise of the world is causing us to not hear the whisper of God. And what we're going to do today is we're going to position ourselves to hear a whisper from God so that we can 
know his will for our lives. Not your parents' will, not your own will, but God's will for your life. And so we need to ignore opposing voices. Third thing that we need to do is we need to throw off whatever hinders you. Bartimaeus had a coat, and what that coat was symbolic of was his livelihood as a beggar, as a beggar. But how many of us know when it comes to God, we're not begging God to do anything. God wants to move us from beggars to believers. So in order for us to embrace this new identity as a believer, we need to throw off that old identity as a beggar. So he needed to get off that old mindset of being a beggar. And God is calling us in this season to really be believers. And God wants to move us from being beggars to believers because we need to understand that God can do more than what we could ever ask, think, or imagine. So we need to get behind some old mindsets. We need to throw off some old ways of living, some old ways of seeing God. Sometimes the biggest thing that is causing us to doubt God is past disappointments. Maybe in the past you believed God for a certain thing and it didn't come out or turn out the way that you wanted it to. So you are disappointed in God. God didn't show up in the way that you wanted to. So there's disappointment that God wants to heal. Because in order for us to believe big, we have to deal with the things that are hindering our faith in trusting God. And the main thing for believers is disappointment. That's why the longer you are saved, the more safe you are in your life. Early on in faith, you're like risking, I'm going to go to the nations, I'm going to do this and this, and after disappointment, you're just like, ah, I'm just, I'm going to settle. I'm just going to be content. Ah, I don't want to break out of the box. Why? Because breaking out of the box means that you have to risk, and risk means that you have to be vulnerable, and the more vulnerable you are, the more prone to disappointment that you're going to be. But we got to keep on trusting God with our lives. I'm going to call up Pastor Camille to emphasize this point and to really impart faith. And I'm going to tell you this, after you hear from her, you're going to be fired up. You want to go change the world because she will impart something spiritually into our hearts. So come on, come with me welcome Pastor Camille. Thank you. First of all, I wanted to... <clears throat> Share that uh, Sharice, the song, Holy Forever, was the right song for this service. When you brought that song, because it wasn't in the first service, it was in the second service, and I said, that's the right song. And worship, you did a great job, because you set the atmosphere up, because the intercessors are praying, we're praying for this service. There's something, Pastor John, that in this service, God's going to do. Pastor Kali said it in a little way. So when the Holy went on, I said, oh, my God, you're setting this service up. Have your way, God. I just want to say a simple prayer. Father, have your way, God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. I sense your presence. I sense the power of your love in this place. As Pastor John said, the pleasure of your presence is power. We welcome you, Father. As I continue, Father God, to speak the word. That you would reveal yourself and your people as you set us up for doing greater things. This particular service, God is here. God is revealing himself, even as Pastor Kalai is preaching, as I go on with the message. God is going to do something in this service. He is setting this group up for something greater. 2024 is 2024 for more. But there is, a, there is a presence in this place right now. As he was preaching, I closed my eyes and I said, Father, just do it. Just do it. I don't want common sense. I want God's sense. This is what God wants to do to us. He wants to stretch our faith and stretch our prayer so we'll be more effective out there. You know why I can relate to, to this man? And it's because when I was raising that man from the dead, I didn't give up. I persisted 
after God, I kept going to Jesus. I said, are you sure it's me? Are you sure it's me? You know, and then the doctors and the nurses all said, he's dead, he's dead. But I said, Jesus, you said, God, you said. And they said, no, nope. he said, he's dead. He, this is the chart. And I said, I kept like him, waiting for Jesus, for, for him to give me an answer, pressing in. Come on, Jesus, that man is still dead. He's not alive, but you said, you said. I kept going after the Lord. I didn't give up. That's prayer. The whole world is against you, but God's for you. What can't he do through your life? He can do anything if you open yourself up to him. Mustard seed of faith moves the heart of God. Having faith in God, no matter what it is, big or small prayers, he moves according to his perfect will. God has a perfect will because he's greater and he's better than what we could ever think of. So being persistent. And I, I love it. Um, not only was I persistent, I silenced the chatter in the world. This whole world is full of uncertainty, but the word of God is certain. This word of God is powerful and it's active, but it's only active and powerful if you live it out. And that comes with prayer. The closest thing to heaven is on your knees. Many of us don't make time to stay on our knees. You should get on your knees. You know why? He's waiting for us. You know, the beautiful part about prayer is he wants a relationship with you. He wants to sit down and say, tell me your problem, daughter. What really is bothering you? Do you know why there's no unforgiveness? And you know, he actually, he tells me where to read. He tells me that I'm off. He tells me because I keep seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. All, not just some. But you know what? We, we, we're satisfied with the little. I'm never satisfied with the little. I want the more. I want the much. 2024 is for more for those who seek after him more. You seek less, you get less. You pray more, something happens. More prayer, more power. More glory to our king, not me. When that man was raised from the dead, yeah, the newscasters came. Pastor Norman invited him to our Easter service. He received the Lord. He was Mormon. My whole nursing staff received the Lord. And there, some of them are still in our church today. And many of them are in our church because of one resurrected dead person. Because one person took the time to pray. Do you know how effective you can be? When you pray, you can, I tell you something, if everyone took the time to pray to God, you will move mountains and miracles and signs and wonders will happen. The dead can still be raised again. The blind can see the cripple to walk. God's calling his people to the community. God's calling this church to Maui. It is important because we've been praying for Maui all this time. We've been praying for the rally yesterday. We've been praying for all the things that are happening. But every time I hear the good news, I don't want to hear it anymore, the news. I just get on my knees, and I hear the news. I just pray and pray and pray. You know, this young adult approached me yesterday. He says, PC, so all you do is pray? I mean, I said, no, wait, wait, bro. That's not all I do. I, I, I do work, you know. And, and the, the reason I say that is they think that you're in your closet 24 hours, you're on your knees. No, prayer is life. Prayer is life. I go in the community, I'm praying. I, I go in my small group, I pray. Everywhere, it says pray without ceasing. In other words, talk to the Father. Talk to him when you're in the car. Talk to him after you argue with your husband. Just, he wants a conversation with you. It's very simple. We complicate it. We think we have to be eloquent. Oh, I really got to know the Bible. No, just be still and know that he's God. And he shows up. He shows up because you have that precious pause. We're so busy. You know, the enemy, one of his major ploys that keeps us away from prayer is keeping us busy. We're so busy. We don't make time for God anymore. When we wake up, the first thing you should do is pray. Because once you get on the floor, you're gonna start, your mind starts wondering, oh, I got to get to work, make my coffee. I got to take my kids, put my kids in the car. I got to take them to school. Where is the father? Where is he? Is he first or last? Slow it down. Pray. Because when you pray, something happens. God used an ordinary woman. It's ordinary. 
to raise the dead, but he hasn't stopped using me. I don't want him to stop using me. I want the people to know that there is a God. There is a King Almighty, like Pastor John said, a merciful God. He loves us so much. But how is the world going to know unless we have a relationship with the king? How is the world going to know unless you read your Bible? You know, I want to reflect back to what Pascal I said about throw off whatever hinders you. He left his coat. He, Barnabas, he left his coat behind. Why? He went, blind as he was, to Jesus because he knew once he's healed, he's not going back to be a beggar. He's going to follow Jesus. And sometimes we don't pray because we don't leave the thing. We, we don't let go of this road or the burden. Oh, I'm not saying it's all on us. We carry it with us. We're the Lord said, let go and let God. Let God do it. Let God lift you up. Let your words be few, but let it be mighty. This is what God has called you. So when you lift, when you um, take those things, you, anything that hinders you for prayer, when I get kind of off sometimes, you know, I do get off sometimes, but I get on my knees and I say, I'm so sorry, I repent. If I've offended you, I love the creed. I memorized this for so many years, but there's also a prayer that follows the creed. And it says, oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because of thy just punishment. But most of all, because I've offended you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. And you know that prayer comes? That prayer comes with prayer. Because when we turn away from God, he still waits. When we don't go to him and pray, he still waits. He will always wait. Because the Bible said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He will never leave us, but we leave him. God is calling the church to himself. God is calling the power of his love to be upon us so we can do it in the ministry. We can do it out there. God is calling us to be the salt and the light to the earth because of prayer. I thank God for your intercessors. I thank God for your volunteers. I thank God for worship. But I tell you something, that all took prayer. Stand up, Pastor Kali. I'm going to boast on you again. Turn around, this handsome guy. And he did marry up, I tell you. And that, that, that son, Judah, handsome for the glory of the king. But let me tell you something. This man is here, and I wanted to tandem with him because he took a lot of prayer. He's evidence of prayer. And we pray for our young men. And that little girl, Naomi, who prayed for me, the little one, she prayed for me. I had a prayer, the hands on me, the little girl. It starts young. We matter to this generation. Actually, he could take the whole message. He really could. But then the Lord said, no, just go inside a little bit, and he will finish it up. I always listen to God. I always want to hear what he says. But it's for this reason, when I see him preach, when I see his wife and little Judah, I keep praying until something happens. I want God to tell him what his purpose is. I want, he's, he's at that place of waiting for God. I want God to show up for him and his wife and the mission. See, everybody, as long as you can talk, you can pray. We have the gift of gab. We can talk, but we don't pray. Thank you, Pastor Kali. You understand? So anyway, throwing off the cloak. I have to share this story because God spoke clearly to me at um, Kamehameha School. My grandson, he was wrestling, and uh, he's in a wrestling team. And um, Puno was competing against Smyrno, and he's with Puno. So they're in the bracket of 200 and five pounds to 280 pounds. My grandson is 215 pounds, but the other one looked like he was 280 pounds, really big. So I don't know much about wrestling, so I have to ask my son, who wrestled in school, and I said, what is the language? I can't show, I can't say tackle the guy. I can't say throw the basket. You know, what do I do? He said, mom, there's only three things you can say. He says, um, roll over, um, Pin them down. No, roll them over, flip, and pin them down. I said, okay. So my grandson, I knew he prayed because I could see him, and I texted him. I said, God's with you. And he said, I got, he's not supposed to text, but he did. He said, I got it, Grandma. And he threw his phone on the side, and I started to speak in tongues. So he comes onto the mat with that big guy, 
and they look at each other like they're going to kill each other. You know how they, this vicious look. So they're like this, they're down on each other. Their hands are on each other's body, and they're there, and then they're going round in circle, round in circle, and I'm speaking in tongues, and I'm watching, and then all of a sudden, that Myrna guy, he, he, he turns my grandson around, and he lands right on the ground. You can hear the badok, and I go, oh, my God, oh, my God, I am not satisfied. I am not I'm in, the, um, I'm in the bleachers. I'm not satisfied. That ain't going to happen to my grandson. I, I stopped being the referee, but, you know. Anyway, the bottom line is he, he gets turned over, and I said, okay, Koi, what do I say? He said, flip, mom, flip. I said, okay, girl, girl, flip the guy. Flip the bugger. I mean, forget the pastor's hat. The, the tutu came out. And I said, you know, so I'm up there. Flip the guy. Girl, flip the guy. And I said, next. He said, pin. I said, pin the guy. Pin the guy. And you know what? Now, three rounds, one minute each round. Well, as soon as he flipped them, he pinned them, and the referee went, he won the gold medal. Now, what's the base to the story? As I sat there on the beaches, I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My grandson looks at me, and he goes, that's my grandmother. And he walks off. <laughs> now, why would they say that? That's what the Satan does. That's what the devil does to us. He puts weight on us. He oppresses our life. And yet we have the authority by the power of prayer and the word of God to flip him and pin him down. That's what we say about prayer. We have the authority to tell the enemy, get out of my marriage, get out of my house, break the stronghold of poverty in my family. Aren't you, aren't you, didn't you have enough? Think about your lives. If things don't change, don't you think it's time for you to get on your knees? You've got, we've got to wake up. God is so willing. He is. The next one is our prayers are just too small. We think too small of a big God. After the experience with, with Mr. Noni, I never stopped praying big prayers. Nothing's impossible to those who believe. And I believe God will answer prayer in due season, due time, as long as the quantity is perfect will. And I want his will to be done. I tell you, prayer works. Single mom raised five kids myself. I asked God, I said to this, and this reminds me of Hannah because she had a covenant with God too. I had a covenant with God. I said, God, I'll serve you. Who am I to proposition God? I was just learning about him, but I prayed it. I'll serve you. If you teach me five things, and I got it in my, my journal, one, you teach me how to love you, and I can teach my kids how to love you. Number two, that my kids will succeed and finish college because I never finished college. Number three, that they would have a home of their own so they don't get evicted like how we got evicted so many times as a single mom. And number four, they get a good job so they can be a man and the head of household to take care of the wife and the children. And the last one, a godly woman. A godly woman so they can do ministry. This day I stand before you because of the power of prayer that all five of them have come to pass. All five. How can you not serve a God who already revealed to you in your life and your walk and showed you up and showed up and says, this is your, this is your prayer request, daughter. All these 50 years. You know what? I didn't have to wait for my prayers to be answered. I fell in love with a king. And he served me well. And they all amount to every five steps, all of them. And I look at that and I say, I thank you, God, because you taught me how to love you, God, because you first loved me. Now help me to love prayer so that I can pray for other people. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. So that's why our prayers are too small. Well, how about having big faith for the big God? And of course, our prayers are too general. Here's a good one. When you're at the hospital, you pray for specific things. If a person has cancer, we ask, what, what stage of cancer is it? Where is it? How big is a centimeter? And I don't do it to get nosy. I do it to strike force prayer. And this one girl came, and she told me about it. I said, let me just ask you three questions, honey, if you're at liberty, tell me. And she told me the size. She told me the, the stage. She told me all this thing. And we pray for her. We douse her in prayer like you folks do over here in the altar. We douse her in prayer. One week later, she said, PC, guess what? There's no cancer. Prayer. Strike force prayer, meaning be specific. Don't be general. 
When you give me a general problem, I'm going to ask you questions. You know why? I don't want the enemy to have any game on you. I want to break and bind and loose. Bind the spirit of cancer and infirmity. Loose the spirit of healing and faith upon that person. That's prayer. If you don't know how to pray, sit with your prayer warriors here. Your intercessory pockets. You have six or seven. You want to learn to pray? Be around the atmosphere of prayer. The young adults are always around me because they want to catch you. I said, you can learn this. Read your Bible. Follow Jesus. One more thing before I call Pastor Kaya up here to finish with the last, the last um, scripture. The last. And I say this many times with the intercessors. We have over 330 intercessors throughout the week. We have all these pockets. It's not because of the numbers. It's because we adore and worship our God. And we're going to fight the good for the faithful people, not for ourselves. But there's no room for laziness. There's no room for procrastination. There's no room for slumber. It's room for fight. So when we're talking about flipping, you know, flipping, my, my grandson flipped the person over and then he pinned them down. That's the kind of prayer we have for Maui. God, turn this around. Turn Maui around and flip up for the good of the people. That's the kind of prayer God is looking for. Not like, oh, okay, you know, enough of that already. What are you going to do about it? Pray about it. Give God the glory and the honor. Let him move you with compassion the way Jesus moved with compassion for his people. God is calling this church to go out there. And this is the 2024 for more. More of him, less of you. More prayer, more power. More money, more give. More favor, blessed is his name. This is what God has called this church to do. Mighty more works. I tell you something, I don't just see a few C's and MDCs. I see God's going to be doing a lot of things in this church that you're not even aware of yet. But I sense in the spirit that God is birthing something new. And I thank him for that. And I'll call Pastor Kai up to finish the end. And we're going we're gonna to end in the most powerful manner. Woo! Oh, hot. This thing is hot, hot, hot. Mic is hot. Can we get the keyboard to come back up as we just kind of land this plane? Uh, I want to remind us of the whole takeaway today. Big prayers, big God, right? And sometimes our prayers are too small and too general. It's reminding me of a, a story of a, a guy that was in my group in this one particular season, and he was going through some uh, stuff in his life, and he was going through some hard times, and so he asked me for a ride home, and I knew that he was kind of hungry. <clears throat> and so I asked him, hey, man, you want, you want something to eat? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. So I didn't take no for an answer, so we rode up to Burger King, which was right around the corner, and pulled up to the drive-thru, and uh, I said, hey, man, just... You want anything? He goes, nah, whatever, whatever. I was like, no, no, don't worry about it. I got it. I got you, bro. How many of us know when you get that, I got you, a little boldness comes up, right? So it went from, nah, whatever, to, can I get a double whopper, <laughs> large onion rings, sub soda for strawberry shake, and then a, a cheesecake on the side. And I looked at him, I was like, oh, you got real bold, huh? Real bold, and I mean, quarter Chinese. I was like, oh, this is a pretty big, pretty big bill here. But you know what happened? I, I got him that. Why did I get him that? Because he asked. Jesus asked this guy, what do you want me to do for you? And that was like a blank check. And in that moment, he could have said anything else, but the real thing that he needed was his sight. And sometimes we don't ask specific things from God because we feel unworthy. We don't feel like we're deserving of what he has for us. But we want to remind you, man, this God that we serve is a loving God. That he wants to move on our behalf. But he also wants us to invite him to specific areas in our lives. And as we close, I want you to just close your eyes right now. If God were to ask you this question, because I feel like he is. He's asking you, what do you want me to do for you? I want you to take a moment and in your heart. Be clear on exactly what it is that you want him to do. And we're going to believe together in faith that God will show up in power in our lives.
Holy Spirit, come. You're here. Speak. Begin to move on our behalf. Lord, you heard every single prayer. Lord, even the biggest prayer is small to you. It's nothing. And so, Lord, we pray that you would increase our faith in this moment. Some of you are your contemplating a few decisions and you're asking God for clarity and I believe in the next few days God is going to close some doors you're asking for open doors but he's going to close specific doors because the closed doors will lead you to the one door that he wants you to walk into so Lord we thank you for closed doors sometimes we only want the open door but Lord we pray that the closed doors that are happening in this moment will lead us to your divine will for our lives I just even sense in this moment that some of us have some emotional trauma that God wants to heal in this moment and I know some of us a lot of the trauma that happened last year that's that's a heavy one but even beyond what happened with the fires last year I believe that there's still some trauma and some of our emotions that God wants to heal in this moment now, God can't undo what was done, but he can heal the pain that's associated with what was done to us. And if that's you, I just want to invite you to put your hand on your heart. God, we pray healing on our hearts. God, remove the sting from the trauma. God, let the memories of the past not produce the pain in our hearts. Set us free, God. Heal us. Holy Spirit, heal our hearts. In fact, don't just heal our hearts. Give us a brand new heart. That's what your word promises, God, that you're going to heal. You're going to give us a brand new heart that's receptive and obedient to you. So heal us. Heal us. And then even some of us are believing God for physical healing. And the Bible says by his stripes we are healed. So Lord Holy Spirit, we invite your divine touch into our physical bodies. As we had that communion, God, you exchange weakness for strength, God. And so these areas in our physical body that isn't operating in the way that you designed it, Lord, be the divine physician. Bring healing, alignment, restore strength into our bodies. Lord, let the breath of life breathe strength into our physical bodies. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that we can never out-ask you and we thank you for the miracle that's being produced in this moment. We make room for you because we want more in 2024. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Pastor Jonathan, come on, let's give God some praise for who he is. Thank you, sir. How many of you are blessed this morning by that word? Thank you, Pastor Camille and Kalai, for coming over. That, that word of more in 24, I just want to encourage you. Some of you, God has already been talking about uh, surrendering your life in a greater way and giving your life uh, in the waters of baptism. And, and I want to encourage you this morning, uh, every single Ohana Sunday this year, we're going to be having a baptism. And you might not understand it with your mind, but we know two things are certain when we do have baptisms. One is that our flesh is destroyed in the waters of baptism and we rise in a resurrection of his, in power of his resurrection. And number two, that the power of the enemy is cut off as we dedicate ourselves. So as we surrender our lives more, that God will give us more. And so if God is moving on your heart to a new level of surrender, uh, don't ignore that, that stirring in your heart, but be obedient to surrender your life uh, to him in the waters of baptism. And you can do that out there. Uh, next week after second service, there's going to be uh, orientation class for baptism. If you want to get baptized and give your life uh, in that way to the Lord, in total surrender to the Lord, and he will multiply back to you a hundredfold what you give to him. And then uh, the, last, the last thing, and um, we're, we're not, sh should we close this YWAM? Okay, uh, YWAM, could you please stand up? This is our new YWAM team that uh, will be serving in our kids' ministry and uh, youth ministry. They come every month, and uh, so if you see these guys around, welcome them. And I just felt a stirring as Pastor Camille was sharing 
um, what she said is completely uh, true. There are so many young ministers that are coming out of Grace Bible Pearl Side, and they all are a result of prayer. And I just want to encourage all of us, as you see the young people walking around in our church, uh, from, from infants all the way to high schoolers, young adults, just be praying. Uh, pour, pour prayers over their lives that God would use them in a powerful way, that he'd apprehend their hearts, that he would give them a new heart. And I believe as this church, as we begin to pray for our younger people, the younger generation, that we're going to see young ministers rise up and be used by God in a powerful way. Um, we're going to close this, this morning, uh, but we're going to have our intercessors come up. If you have any needs, uh, anything that you're believing God for, it could be some of the things that were surfaced as Pastor Kalai was, was praying. Um, we believe that as you agree with anyone, that God is there, and whatever we ask in his name will be given. And so uh, let, let me just pray for us, and then uh, I'll just dismiss this this morning. God, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst. God, I thank you for the struggles that you've taken us through in 2023. But God, even as we were praying, I saw, I saw this, this, uh, this trough and this peak, and how the peak was... Uh, just as high as the trough was deep. And God, even though you've taken us through uh, the valley of the shadow of death, God, we declare in our hearts that we fear no evil because what you're going to do in 2024 is exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God, I pray that, that faith would rise and faith would be stirred in the hearts of your people this morning. God, and as we go into 2024, Lord, that we would go in with a, a greater sense of surrender to your will, a greater sense of fear of your name, a greater sense of, of expectation of what you're going to do through our lives. And Lord, as we give you our lives as humbly as we can and as little as we have to offer, God, that you are going to multiply that the same way that you broke the five loaves and two fishes and you fed the multitudes. God, I pray that this church, Lord, as we take that first step of surrendering our lives to you, God, that you would use this in a powerful way to change a government, to change business, to believe you for the things that nobody can do and nobody has answers for on this island. God, that you're going to use your church to bring your kingdom. We, we, we say the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on Maui as it is in heaven, in this state as it is in heaven. We thank you for your promises. In Jesus' wonderful name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. God bless you if you need prayer for anything. Our intercessors are up in the front. Have a great week.